All right, D. You want to start it off now? I'm trying to figure out how to start. Like, how do I, like, what? what is this show about, Devil Man Crybaby? Devil Man Crybaby is a show that is a remake of a 90s show that's about a dude who transforms into a devil, but he's also a man because all devils are evil. Devil man. And he is a, he is a devil. Guys, guys, did you know that he is a devil man? Oh, boy. Did not what know. Watashi no devil man. <laughs> <laughs> and because he's a devil man, he has a human heart. And, and uh, like, pretty much he's not as evil as the devil. He has the powers of the devil and the heart of a human. And the entire show is about his relationship with his friend Ryo, who, um, uh, who's he, who he is working together with to um, uh, deal with the devils in the world situation by get, just gotta get fighting them. Get rid and, of all the devils. All yeah, get rid of all the all. devils. And eventually introduce the, the existence of devils to the world in order to get the world governments on their side and fight against the devils. Characters? So, guys, what are your feelings on... How about, how about we start with the main characters and their dynamic? What are your feelings on those guys? Uh, I like them. I liked... Um, well, can't, I can't even remember the guy's name. Shit. Ryo and Akira? <laughs> Akira. Akira. Yeah. <laughs> you have a lot of trouble with that. You didn't even remember the two Mikis oh, yeah. earlier. No, I, I do not. I am terrible with names. But, anyway, um, Mr. Edgy Emo Dude, I liked him. He was, he was cool. Yeah. So at first when he was introduced, I actually didn't like him that much because he seemed so strange. Like he's like he's clearly he's a nice kid and he has this friendship with Miki and Rio, but like he seems kinda like too too okay with things. Like he's even as he's trying to stop those rapper dudes from getting all up in Miki's face, he's always like smiling and he's like this happy go lucky boy and it just seems so like Well, I think he's more of just kinda like you really can't do much, but that's the one thing you can do. Yeah. Kind of thing. I I see him as more of, like, all right, I'm super passive in most things, but, like, when it comes to my friends, I'm going to go and help them out as best I can. He's optimistic. Yes. Yeah. I like him a whole lot better. Like, I guess my main problem is that it just he just acts weird, and I don't know what to make of it. Well, I, I kind of like that, too. And when he... Be- it, oh, sorry. <laughs> I, I like that, the fact that he kind of acts weird. Um, he gives off this vibe of like, kind of like a loner, loser kind of thing, um, just because. I mean, that's kind of what he is, and that yeah. it just it it amplifies the transformation from him from before the devil happens. And then I can't remember what the Aqua or what what is the devil's Amon Amon Amon. Yeah, Amon. As soon as Amon possesses him, uh, spoilers by the way. Um, no, no, we're going to be spoiling everything. <laughs> spo- everything yeah, spoiled? yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. We're going to talk about the show as a whole. All right, cool, Leo. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so I liked it when he was talking about shit. I don't remember where I was going with this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you liked it when you transformed into the devil. Yes. And then it like... Well, I, I liked the transition because it was a lot more um, broader. It, like, it, it, it showed it a lot. It emphasized it a lot more. Like his niceness and weirdness? Yes. Yeah, like yeah. It, just the fact that, like, it's like, all right, now I'm actually, like, an okay person. I'm more of a whole with this devil. Yeah. Inside. Like, like I was going to say, like, when he, as soon as he turns to the devil, his character's great. And he becomes this, like, he becomes more kind of like a uh, devil may care a bit. Uh, devil may yeah, care. Yeah, no. And, like, and, like, and now there's, like, a whole dynamic where he has to fight against, like, his sort of evilness. And that's very, and that's made very clear and... Um, uh, early on, and now like there's something like there's something more clear and interesting going on with this character, which is why I like the devil transformation. Like devil Akira is best Akira. <laughs> yeah, I also um, just want to say that uh, you know you see him before he transforms, and it's like the first episode, and then you see him again when he like how he was before he transformed and I completely forgot what he looked like. And <laughs> they're showing him. I'm like, who's that? Oh. Like in flashbacks later on or something? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just because I got used to like, you know, the transformed one. Which, another thing that sort of bothered me was, you know, he transformed overnight and yeah. like people noticed but it was, they weren't like, oh, he grew two feet. It was like, 
oh, he's actually kind of sexy now. Yeah. It's like... Look at him run. <laughs> like, to show that, like, that weird-looking animation. <laughs> the one that stands out to me is like, oh, my man, his... I think, like, a character goes, wow, his bulge is so manly. Oh, and like, oh, you yeah. get, like, a side <laughs> shot of that. It's like, whoa, jeez. Like, oh, was... Like, he just has that whole, yeah, like, just alpha, like, that bulge, like see, that's... But <laughs> no one questioned that he grew, like, two feet and was the tallest kid in school. <laughs> I mean, yes. what are you supposed to do? Just yeah. be like... He has emo eyeliner. Like, yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> He's buff all overnight. He's eating everything. Everything. Every yeah. single thing. <laughs> all the things. Um, and, and then he was watching porn. And oh, yeah. I forgot about that part. And like he was just cafe- straight up watching porn, right? In the middle of the... Just, he, yeah, 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 yeah in the big this. IMAX theater that within the school he was watching. Man, yeah. look at me. I am... I am an edgy man. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. Um, but yeah. Um, so I think, so thematically, I think his character is supposed to, like, I think it's pretty clear what his character represents. And, like, if the devils represent all of the evil of humanity, he represents, like, he conquers it, like, he represents that, the fact that humanity can't conquer that side of just themselves. Just a little bit of hope, and then it just he, gets snuffed out in Oh, there. man, it gets snuffed out <laughs> so hard. Yeah. Everything got snuffed out um, so hard. Uh, what was last all? two episodes. So Rio, what are you? What are your? Um, here, actually, before we go on to Rio, just let me think. Do I, did I forget anything? Uh, did anyone forget anything? I don't think so. The cum scene. <laughs> oh oh God. God! Yeah, I forgot that, and then you bring it back. <laughs> That's scary. That's, that's from Scary Movie One. God, that scene has now happened twice in this like prime universe that we live in. That scene where just huge giant, like I get what that scene is, and like he's like he's he's having. It's just the fact that it like it kind of showed it. I uh, wasn't that that kind of just like why. What? Why? There's a lot of stuff in the in the series. I was like, why? <laughs> oh, the why? donkey, the donkey moans. Oh God! Um, <laughs> let's get to that later. Uh, so I think Rio, like Rio, goes through a bunch of trials. I think that test like his humanity, and you know we have the sex stuff from that one episode Rio? where he, no Rio? no I'm, uh, Akira did yeah, I say Rio Akira. yeah you said Rio oh I meant Akira like he goes through a bunch of trials right you know he has the fight with that one lady and uh, and he's always like. Like he always, um, uh, he doesn't ever kill humans in the series except that one time where it was completely justified. If you remember, yeah, I remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, yeah, you can't, it's hard to not remember that scene, especially like you just finished the anime last night. Yeah, <laughs> that that probably got that got a little bit of emotion from me, but oh yeah, that's <laughs> the rest like, of it was just just eh. Um, and yeah, I guess like I guess I like that he goes through trials on the show. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Made me sad. Uh, <laughs> oh my god. Um, so you guys want to talk about Rio now? Yeah. Yeah. So okay. Rio's scene. Let's. So he is introduced and all, and he like. Oh my god. Okay. One more thing about Kira. I just remember what I forgot. He cries for other people. Yeah. And it's almost supernatural the way like he can detect emotions. And I thought they were going to reveal something later in the show that. Uh, that revealed that he has some sort of ESP psychic ability, or that he had the devil inside him all along, and that devil's ability was that he can just learn, he can sympathize with people in the most like real way. Okay. No, I think it was like, just that he was empathetic and could tell when people were, uh, I guess, sad. like well, you know, they, they were putting yeah. on a an outward mask of being yeah. okay, but he could see like, no, they're not. That ability to detect other people's emotions and cry for them literally makes him the nicest person in the universe. Because, like, if he's so good at that, that he can cry when that athlete dude is, like, just has a stone-cold face. Or when Ryo has a stone-cold face. That's a big thing. Mm -hmm. Like, that's, like, he's the nicest person in the universe. Yep. And that's why he's so good at being the devil man. He literally became friends with Satan. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of Satan, transition, let's talk about Rio. <laughs> so Rio's character introduction, as I was trying to say earlier, like, he's introduced, he's all like, come on, Akira, fucking just kill... Kill the bunny. Kill it's, the bunny, he's going to die anyway, it die. makes more sense to end his suffering right now. Like, Rio's defined by his, like, his cold logic, mm-hmm. and his, like, ability to pretty much, like, he just kills people without remorse. Yeah, no, like, throughout this, 
the series or the episodes, I thought, like, you know, there's something off with him. Like, yeah. I'm like, it's going to be revealed that, oh, he's a, you know, like a demon the whole time or whatever, which I guess I was sort of right, but not in the way that I thought. You didn't think he was going to be just flat out Lucifer? No, I had, you know. Like, yeah, that kind of jumped out. He's like, oh, yeah, he's the devil. Just, he is the literal devil. Like, I thought his actions in the early series, like, like he he, uh, he expresses motivations as, you know, we need to fight the demons, but a lot of his actions are inconsistent, and Akira even questions them. Mm-hmm. But then, you know, the reveal is all like, no, he was doing something subconsciously the entire time, and he has that moment in the later episodes where he's all like, why am I even doing the things I'm doing? Right. Mm-hmm. And he okay. says, like, not according to plan. He's all like, wait, what plan? You know? Remember, like, the first episode where at the the Sabbath party where you know he gets hurt and everything yeah he but, wants to bring him on well, well and but later it talks about how um he instinctively defends himself he has, like he'll use the powers to de- defend himself yeah 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 why didn't they appear there if I don't know I would like to think that they would have but Amon ended up stepping in before. You know, actually, I think that might be explained. Like, Ryo was waiting for uh, Akira to become a devil man so that his plan, and then that would, like, be the start of his plans where he unleashed demons upon the world and asked Akira to join him by his side. And I feel like revealing to Akira that he has powers beforehand with Jeppita is that plan. So right. maybe he subconsciously just didn't do that. He subconsciously took the hits. And then, you know, he healed later, and he's all like, I don't know why, but I guess I, I'm pretty he's resilient. Like, yeah, I just heal fast. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, so do you want to go into... Well, I also want to talk about when Rio transformed. Yeah, we need to talk about, like, his appearance. He has oh, yeah. boobs and... Absolutely. I... Like... What, we, what are our opinions on his final form? I think it works for him. I think it's just because it's like, yeah, it though... shows that he's not of this earth. Yeah. And well, I always thought that Lucifer as an entity represents the worst of mankind. He represents all like giving into temptation and doing evil. And I feel like if you make that representation like a single gender, that kind of makes the message seem a bit more biased. Oh, and thus you... making him multiple genders like, you know, makes sure that that's, you know, it's fair. <laughs> I guess it, it makes... I just made him genderless. Yeah. Yeah, it's essentially what I, I think it's more of like it's both like, it's both genders, going along with the fact that, like... But, Andrew, if you made him genderless, it wouldn't be nearly as, like... It wouldn't have gotten your attention as much, as much as a lot of the sex and violence stuff in the series would have. <laughs> I'm okay with that. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we can talk about a bunch of character arcs ending when we talk about the ending of the show. So, let's talk about the other characters for now. Um, Miko. Miko? Miko. Miko. Miki. I was. Then, and, well, you don't want to start with Mickey? Mickey? No. I mean, okay, Mickey. She is good at everything. She's really and good everyone at likes sticking her. her head on a pike. <laughs> yeah, her head fits nicely on a pike. Um, <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> she's good at everything. Everyone likes her. She's fast. Um, she's the nicest person ever. She has social media personalities. Um, I don't. I. I still don't. I'm not okay with her arc in the first three episodes. Oh, with the fact that she was going out. With the photographer, because oh, that just yeah. like she's I, a nice guy. person and she's good at a lot of stuff, but and I she's just naive. like. But whenever she like, or sorry, what did you say? She's naive. Yeah, like whenever, like I don't believe that she would be that naive. I don't think her parents would be either. Yeah, and her parents are super okay with it. Like, oh my, my daughter took these bikini shots for this shady looking yeah, motherfucker. Yeah, that was kind of odd. I yeah, did she, they actually know about it? Yeah, yeah, they I think they did it. mention it at some point. And. And, like, in the first episode, like, the students are talking about it pretty openly. Right, the students are, but the... I would and think the parents, the and, yeah, the parents also the parents hear it. Know. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. Maybe she's, like, she's like, all right, she's going to be a model, I guess. Every scene you saw the photographer in was like, this guy's evil. There's no way anyone would think he is not evil. Like... I think that's the point, though. I, I don't know. But it, but it made, like, it made Miki look super dumb. Yeah. And it, she, and it didn't seem like she would be that, because she's so good at things, and she's so, like, charismatic and, like, nice, and she has social media personality and everything. Yeah. And when that arc... I should say that when that arc ended, Miki's character was fine for the rest of it. 
Because, like, they yeah. never mention that bit again. And, like, yeah. and then their character is a whole lot more consistent for it. So, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it might also be just a product of its time, too. Maybe. Because, like... Was, this is back from the 70s. So this is about 40-some years ago. 40... The original author... 48 wrote, years ago. The original author himself, I think his name is Ken Gagoy. I'm going to... I. If I pronounce it wrong, I'm going to edit in the actual name and mm-hmm. editing. Um, but yeah, he wrote like a bunch of like, you know, risque, raunchy things like Devil Man. And, right. And, uh, and you ever heard of Violence Jack? No. Well, he Violent wrote, Jack. He wrote uh, Violence Jack. I've heard of Samurai Jack. Is it ultra violent? Violence Jack is a whole lot more controversial than Devil Man, I'll tell you that. Uh, okay, um, Miko. <coughs> Miko. Uh, I liked, I really liked Miko's character. I, I liked her character too. How about you, Andrew? <laughs> yeah, she developed, um, you know, she had, like, motivation, like, she was, she was the top, and then Miki appeared. And then people and, started calling her Miko. Yeah, like, her, Miko's name is Miki, but because another Miki appeared that was better than every, and everything at her, everyone started calling her Miko. Better than everything at her? Yeah, let, words. <laughs> um, <laughs> Better at everything than she was. Yeah. Okay. Um, and so yeah, then everyone started calling her Miko, and she hated Miki because of that, which caused her to develop even more as a character. Yeah, like she where, had a big inf- inf- inferiority thing. Yeah, but she she couldn't hate her well she hated her and she still like loved her yeah she and, admired her and yeah, just, yeah admired her mm-hmm. and it was she didn't know she was conflicted and in the end she realized that i okay yeah yeah sorry she, she realized that um even though she was better than her she still like was her friend yeah and like that, like I love the way her character arc ends, and she like she dies protecting her. She dies protecting like this person who was up until that point, up until a certain point, was a source of a lot of her anguish. Mm-hmm. Now with that, now like she had, like I think we all agree she had a pretty solid character arc throughout the entire show. Yes, mm-hmm. and like, um, now <laughs> let's talk about that scene for a bit. Oh. The donkey scene. The donkey. It was fucking, like, that was uncomfortable for sure. Yeah. So. I, I don't really truly understand that scene. Um, I, I have theories. Here's my it. take on it. So she showed up at, at, at with uh, to the photographer because she's all like, because I guess in her mind she's all like, Miki got popular by taking uh, risque photos. I should do that too. And that's what resulted in that. But, like, it got so dark, and I felt like it was so unnecessarily dark. And then, and then like, during, like, okay, so what happens in the scene? And I, I hate to have to say that, is that she starts taking the photos, but then, like, the photographer ends up sexually assaulting her in the end. And while it's happening, like, the scene fades out, and you hear, like, these donkey noises. And I guess those donkey noises are there to, like, emphasize the ugliness of the scene. But it comes off as, like, really, like... Like, unnecessarily fucked up? Yeah, not only that, the fact that she's also masturbating to it. Yeah, yeah. like, I don't get that at all. Like, I mean, granted, I, who knows, maybe that's just a way of her dealing with it. Um, I don't know. I, I truly don't understand. Um, if anybody uh, has theories on it in the comments. Yeah, if anyone wants to explain, <laughs> like, give us peace on that scene well, i would really appreciate it this. yeah they have to watch it um but yeah no that scene was um very uncomfortable yeah to watch but i think that that's kind of the point of it yeah um but it's still like it's still hard to like accept as a yes, scene absolutely and i think i i think it would have been different if it wasn't in there um i think it helps it i don't think it would have been too much of a loss if it wasn't there but at the same time, I think it does add a little bit to the overall character of her, just because that it shows that she's not truly all there right away. I guess. 
Like, um, I'm not entirely sure on that, but I, I guess I could kind of see where you're coming from on that. Yeah. I don't know. Um, That's my theory. Other characters that um, we want to talk about. Um, okay, do uh, you want to talk about just... I guess we're talking about them in order. Want to talk about Rapper Crew? I loved Rapper Crew. Rapper, Rapper Crew is great. Is fa- like my favorite thing from this whole thing, <laughs> except except for the hoodie guy. Yeah, the the fucking trader guy. Yeah. Okay, so did everyone understand that betrayal? Because that I had to look up later why that happened. Trader guy. Yeah, the guy. Remember, in the yeah, because for okay, I think it like happens for just a couple. Oh yeah yeah, 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 yeah. And he like joins the kill mob and like kills the rest of the rapper crew. Yeah, that was weird. Okay. Now do you know why he betrayed them? Because there actually is a reason, but it's really hard to spot. Not a clue. So he looks into Miko's bag and finds the sunglasses of his dead friend, and he thinks that Miko had something to do with his death and disappearance. Oh yeah. It that, happens that for guy. like three seconds, but he just pulls the sunglasses out, looks at them. And, of course, you never see his face entirely, so you don't see him making a facial expression. But he just looks at them, and you're supposed to assume from that that that's why he turns Got heel. It. So does her friend, like, going back to the guy with the sunglasses, um, me and Lucas had a discussion about this earlier. Um, before okay, this, okay, actually, we didn't understand Andrew, it. Andrew, I need to ask you. So you know that scene where that guy with the sunglasses takes Miko to the club yeah. at her request, and then they get attacked by fucking demons, and Miko becomes a devil man. And uh, it turns... Okay, so they have another guy with the same haircut. He's I know. a double man too. I know. He's a separate guy. I know. I was like He's from another school who also happens to run track. They look the same and even like in the show they're like like oh I can thought I confused you. But the fact that like what <laughs> like characters change appearance um when they get the devil man in them and since he had a devil man in him, we just assume that like that was him again. Yeah. Even though it didn't make any sense. I know, sense. it wasn't him. It was so unclear. But, like, actually, now that I think about it, I think there's a few shots of Miko's bag earlier with her sunglasses in them, and you're supposed to assume that, like, Miko kept a memento of, like, their time together. Right, that's, that's yeah, that's what I was saying. Because, like, the... when, when you're introduced to a mod sunglasses rap man, I don't know his fucking name. Do you guys know? I don't think it was ever. Okay. So, I always said once. When uh, they're in the shed. Yeah. But I don't remember. We assume that, you know, he's going for Miko. He's trying to, like, become her friend and maybe love interest or something like that. And he's dr- and he's making a genuine effort. He comes up with that beautiful rap about her. And that touches her heart. And that, oh man, I love that scene. Yeah. <laughs> that seems good. Dude, all the rap scenes are good. Like, I love the ending rap, too. The last one? The last rap that they did when they are on the barrel... Um, the flaming barrel. Were they talking about how the world was shit or something yes, like that? I yeah, loved it. like the world's fucked up. It's shit. Everyone's killing each other. <laughs> yes, loved it. Fantastic. Um, but other than that, uh, I think all the characters were good. Yeah, I think. Um, except for I think post episode three, it's safe to say that all the characters are good and consistent for the rest yeah. of the series. I wish they would have done a little bit more with. Oh, you have some something to say, Andrew? <laughs> yeah, I just thought of. Oh, uh, you know the cat. Oh, yeah, that cat. Oh, He's a yeah. fucking bro. Yeah. He becomes a devil man, too. That was weird. Becomes a cute little that devil man. They didn't explain it. Maybe they explained it. That cat fuses the devil to, like, a vengeance master. <laughs> Fuck it. That's the explanation I'm going with. <laughs> and then at the end, you know, you see it get cut in half. And it's, it's like, no! Like, well, it's like, you see it get stabbed. Because that crazy woman is just like, it's that, you know, cursed family's cat. Kill it. Yeah. You know? Oh, man, that was so senseless the way that happened. And then, you know, all of a sudden you just see, like, the knife just get pulled out, and the cat floats up, and then, <laughs> you know, the tail, so, like, like, lights up, and it's like, oh, okay, what? So this is a thing now. <laughs> like, oh, it's completely fine. And then you see it get cut in half, like, in the Not next episode. Later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, um, <coughs> other people that we should talk about. Other the, people. The, um, Miki's family. Taro was kind of just a shit kid, I guess. <laughs> Taro? I Dude. thought he was alright. And, par- and, and, and her parents were loving. Well, he was like eight and sneaking in and logging on and looking at porn. Yeah, and listening to that Forbidden Devil Man theme song. I mean, I, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I I don't remember when I started first looking at porn, but I don't think <laughs> I was much older than him. So, and I mean, I, he's just a kid. That's all he was. I mean, he was a kid that was a little bit too much... A little bit too much of a fascination with. Uh, he was just a kid who like. You know, he was just, a kid who was allowed to go on the internet a lot more than he should have. 
I think he was just sneaking onto the internet. I don't well, know if they necessarily know. about it. Because every single time he would talk about it, and like Miki would be like, "What the heck are you watching?" Like, yeah, that kind what, of thing. what, like, yeah, quit looking at that. But um, yeah, no, I I like the kid. I felt sorry for him. He, that kind of whole thing was kind of like a heartstring. Yeah, cutter. that sucked. Um, like that entire scene where the father is like, "I'm just," he's just constantly like, "I gotta do it, but I can't. I gotta do it, but I can't." That was really, I really like that scene. Well, I yeah. like the fact that he didn't have to kill him. Um, <laughs> well, he just, well. Well, he, you know, the military takes it. would have been nice if the SWAT <laughs> military didn't kill the dad, too. Yeah, I know. I mean, he did, what was it? Did As soon as he just said, like, stop, that's my son. Yeah. They basically killed him. Yeah. But, yeah. Um. Uh, any other characters we need to talk about? Should we talk about Akira's parents? Kira's parents, not really. Nah, they were there for an ep- not yeah. even an episode. And that was an okay episode. It was about the time when it started turning to like... It was like episode number four, right after episode number three. Yeah. yeah. That's when I was starting to get a little bit better. Also, I want to point out that Akira's parents are like, they're doctors who go all over the world to help people. Like, Akira has all the nice guy genes in him to be the nicest person in the universe. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Well, anyway, if we're done with characters, what's our next topic? Ugliness of humanity. So, this show makes a point to betray hum- humans as pieces of shit. It takes so many opportunities to portray that. Well, I think it goes along the lines that, like, a person, a line, like, like a little catchphrase, or not catchphrase, a little saying that I, like, I totally believe in is that a person is nice, but people are mean. Oh, really? Well, it it's the, um... It's a whole mob mentality. Yeah, mob, menta- mob mentality. It's also with, uh, during World War II with the Nazis, um, a lot of people would, you know, they'd kill, you know, Jews because they're ordered to, and, you know, they yeah. like someone higher up. So what's happening in this is you have the people that are vocal, the people that are, like, being passionate about, yeah. tr- like, fighting the demons. The people follow the and- passionate and then, yeah, they're following them, and then anyone who they see as, like, not with them is against them. Yeah. Rio contributes to a lot of that with uh, yeah. with his uh, Twitch streams. His <laughs> Twitch streams. Yeah. He is streaming, and I, like, for sure, and he speaks in English. Well, I think he's more <laughs> like, a tele- like a television broadcast yeah. kind of thing. I don't, he's not going on Twitch and doing this. I don't know, I assume. I like the idea that he would be. Yeah. But yeah, like, you know, Rio's whole thing is that humanity is, uh, you know, they're going to kill each other, doesn't no matter what. But he, you know, you could, but he himself is inciting that wrath. Yeah. Oh, yeah, another thing I want to talk about is, you know, when apparently, I guess, God attacks, you know, the big, Russia, the big giant white ball that's only supposed to target, like, you know, was demons. That God? So the Donald Trump sends out the Seventh Fleet yeah, no. <laughs> to Russia to just blow him up, I guess, or the, or that's the devil's plan. And then God, in order to prevent that from happening, does the big ball of light. Um, was it God? I thought. Okay, yeah, that was. It's God. God. It's oh, yeah, it's not Satan. Um, you know, if that just kills only demons, like they're saying, um, why did God just, you know? Not immediately blow up the earth with his light. Yeah, and then turns just... all the demons into salt. Yeah, <laughs> which because maybe he wanted uh, some kind of altruistic, like, hey, let's see if they can get out of this themselves. Well, God is always testing humanity, right? And maybe he was trying to stave it off. Don't know. It depends on what he think God is in this yeah. the whole thing. Well, if he is the God that tests humanity, then I think the reason he doesn't just blow up the earth immediately and like like the fact that he doesn't blow up the earth from the very moment demons exist. Like, you know, there's like maybe that's why Akira exists. He's supposed to prove that, you know, humanity can overcome. But unfortunately, Akira wasn't enough. Nope. Man, like the most fi- Okay, so just the last thing we want to talk about as far as or the beginning scene at the club, like that's just filled with like just people having sex with each other, doing drugs, you got butts in the face of the viewer, <laughs> and like titties flying everywhere. Yeah. Like if there's any scene that like, like because that's where the devils first appear in this like center of like human just disgustedness, and in, in this like disgusting human cesspile of <laughs> drugs and sex and. 
and and titties. I don't know what you're talking about. That just sounds like a fun time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe to you. <laughs> no, we all have our own taste. But yeah, no, it, I think that scene's important. I like every scene. It establishes how far really... the the story's gonna go, and like right away with its like violent themes oh, yeah. and stuff. It was just like, all right, we're gonna ramp it up to yeah. eleven, and then oh yeah, cool down. Speaking of like that kind of stuff, uh, you remember that scene where was it Miko was um, the guy came up to her with a gun and was like essentially sort of like oh yeah, like I'm forcing gonna... her to have yeah. sex. So they're doing that, and he's like, I stop, supp- you're being too rough, and then like his head explodes. And she keeps going. Like, is is that supposed to be just, like, a scene where Miko just shows her dominance because she has her new powers? I think that's I what that was, but I'm always so. questioning the fact yeah. that that dude just didn't get killed right away. I I would like to think of it as her just kind of, like... That was another uncomfortable scene right. with Miko. <laughs> like, because that was, that was when she was first... Um, Got her powers right. Yeah, I think no, it, was, it was towards the end. Like, it yeah, end. it was like it was right after that happened. Right after I think the track meet incident. With, yeah, it happened uh, after that. With uh, what's that guy's hairstyle? Does that guy's hairstyle have a name? Uh, like, is it cornrows or uh? Or no, dreads? it's not cornrows, not dreads. It's uh, I don't know. I want to give him I, a nickname based off his. I hairstyle, still think so of it is. Looks like, like, like a paintbrush. Looks like a paintbrush. Paintbrush. I okay. think that scene's more of just to tell her, like, basically to show the audience that, like, yeah, no, she's. Unhinged. Yeah, the, she's still unhinged. She's going point, a little nuts. She's got, <laughs> like, she's dealt with some of her problems. Yeah, she still has dealt with the main one with Miki. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that's all. But yeah. Uh, uh, also, the last depiction, the last greatest depiction of human ugly, ugliness in the show was, of course, the scene where they attack Miki's house and everyone gets fucking killed by a bunch of smiling yeah. psychopaths. And they like decapitate Miki and they and like under and all the, pre- the gangster guys, yeah. except for you know hoodie hoodie guy hoodie fucker. What do you well though? There's another <laughs> the dude. traitor. Oh yeah, and another guy that was in the van. Yeah, yeah, him too. Um, but yeah, like that's like damn, like that's and then, like, that and the scene... fact that they would, you know they took the time to take like you know when you know Miki's running away, they took the time. To take the dead gangsters, throw them in a van, and, you know, cut her off as she's running away. Open up the door for, you know, her dead friend to just fall out in front of her. Like. It's so, like, like oh, God. Like, like that entire scene, like, every guy who was on the killing bats, like, like those guys were all, like. Like, it was so horrible, that entire scene, because those guys were, like, justifying just killing random motherfuckers over the... F- just based on the fact that, like, oh, I, as I'm killing devils, and it shows like just the, this is the worst. Oh, and then there's that scene humanity. with um, Akira where he's standing in front of all the people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh man. And then it was a little awkward when everyone, you know, is coming up to hug him. Yeah. But well, I liked it. He was, was able, like, well, all right, there's just a little bit of hope. And yeah, he like just kind of. And then and then paintbrush motherfucker is the hugest traitor and ruins it. Oh yeah. I'm only out for myself. I'm going to choose the winning side. Yeah. And, like, that sucks, because, actually, we forgot to talk about him in uh, characters, but, like, he was kind of sympathetic. Like, he had a friend that died in the club, I think. Yeah. And, it like, and his, then... um... Lover. Yeah. Essentially, uh, what's his... I can't remember the guy's name. I don't name. know. Um, but, yeah, no, he was wearing the necklace of his lover. Yeah. Um, throughout the whole thing. Um... And I, like, right at the beginning, like, he was just like, why can't you, don't you show any emotion? Yeah. How about your, like, teammate that died? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Akira comes over and cries about it, um, because so he I, can I tell could, that he's crying. Yeah, you were crying at the airport. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I felt like he was a good character. I don't know why he turned heel, because Akira helped him out a lot. He was, like, the first guy that Akira helped. Yeah, that was kind of odd that he turned, um... Turned heel? Turned heel, yeah. This <laughs> is... Um... Yeah, no, I, I think that's just more of like creating conflict, um, and he, the author was just like, "All right, I need somebody yeah. to." We need someone to ruin everything. We need somebody. Well, we, <laughs> he he needed he developed this character, and this character needed to do something, um, and I don't think he wanted to send him out to help, along with like Akira and all them, because I, I wouldn't think that that guy would have ever. I don't think it, he would have ever helped Akira. Really? No, I don't think he would have ever 
gone to the point of like, all right, I'm going to go and help other people. Yeah. Because he was too self-absorbed with himself and his... Um, and his own personal interests. Well, him and his, the guy that got killed. Yeah. Um, his friend. By the way, I never thought, like, any gay sexual stuff would ever be portrayed in an anime ever. Yeah, that's that amazing. caught me off guard. Oh, yeah, that's amazing. I can't name a single other... Like, I've seen, I've watched anime where they have gay characters, but never, like, gay intimacy. <laughs> I thought it was a good and choice. I, I mean, if you're gonna show one side, you might as well show the other. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's two sides of a coin. Um, nothing. It's whatever. Like that, okay, so going back to that scene where Akira's crying in front of all those people throwing rocks and shooting. Like, that scene was like, there might be hope left, but then, and it's so emotional when you're really, like, getting into it. But then, that motherfucker, like, just fucking ruined, like, he blows up everything up. Mm -hmm. And then, like, and then that scene happens alongside the scene where Miki's house is getting, like, wrecked and all them get killed. Like, just, like, way to, like, just bring on the depression and hopelessness, like, just so hard. Right. It's like, why am, why am I watching this? Yeah. But then, like, yeah. Well, I think we should move on to our next thing. Yeah. And we've been kind of talking about it already. Depictions of violence and sex. That we have. Uh, yeah. Depictions of sex and violence. We were talking about um, the gay scene. Um, that was actually one of the better scenes of uh, sex and violence yeah. and everything like that. Because that, like, um, tells you a lot about Mr. Paint Paintbrush. Not only that, it, it, used, it used a way of being progressive. Along with... Like, the fact they have that in there is, yeah. like, very, like, impressive in the first place. Mm -hmm. I I honestly wonder if they did that in the... Original uh, Devil in Man? the original Devil Man. Yeah. Because if, that, if that's true, holy crud, that guy was way ahead of his time. I know that for the original animes, like, the manga... Like, that, that, that author, he wrote a lot of, like, manga that eventually got censored just a little bit in the anime. Like, certain scenes were, like, changed. And it's possible that if, like that relationship was in the original manga, they might have censored it in the original anime. But I'm just speculating, Maybe. so never mind. <laughs> I would I would think that it would have been like censored in the original uh, yeah. yeah. It baffles me it baffles me to this day that like you can have two girls like almost hook up in an anime so much, but because there's like a taboo of them actually like having a relationship, that usually does they usually doesn't go further beyond like being a massive tease to the audience. Thankfully, Maybe. Citrus is here to save us all. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know about Citrus, Andrew? No. And all right. I don't think I want to. Oh, I, I'm, I'll probably tell you about we it later. Can, we can talk about that later. We all are right. talking. We're talking about, about Devil, Devil Man, Man Cry, Cry Baby. Baby. Um, <laughs> um, okay, so the picture of um, so that club scene also like goes to a point to depict like. Just sex and stuff is, oh, like, yeah. is so, like... Like, sex is never portrayed as such a wonderful, lovely thing at any point. Like, you got Akira's dream about Miki, you got the club scene, and, like... Oh, you also have the scene where he's fighting, um... Uh, Celine. Celine, and yeah. <laughs> right in the middle of the air, he ends up fucking her. Yeah. Giving it to her raw dog. <laughs> <laughs> I've avoided talking about that scene, because I don't know what to make of it. I... I want to say, like, it's a character thing. I don't know. I think it's more of just the fact that, like, it's like, hey, you want this? Well, you can fuck have. You, you can have it. We'll do it in midair, and it's gonna like, like make the audience have confused feelings. <laughs> I also the fact yeah. that he was in a red light district, and you yeah. know, he's still in high school, and they. I'm pretty sure that, well, because like stuff like that, I don't know if it's like. I think I think it I think Akira is a minor in the one show. <laughs> in this one, yeah, like and you know I don't really mind that that much because it goes because it's not like there aren't it isn't sexed up for the purpose of like arousing the viewer or anything. It's it's it, there it is a plot thing for the most part. Like you know like when <laughs> true it doesn't sexualize it. It doesn't I sexualize mean, it for the purpose of sexualizing it. I guess I should say a lot of. Well, I'll I'll say this: the first two episodes were definitely there to go and show us, like, all right, this is like, yeah, this is clearly taboo, yeah, and we're gonna show it to you because we are not holding anything back, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and it makes you more comfortable with the 
other depictions later. There are a lot of Does shows. It, though? <laughs> I would like to think so. There are a lot of shows and animes in general that have scenes within their first episodes where it's like, this is how far we're going to go. Yeah. If you can't handle this now and you feel like quitting, then quit now. Right, exactly. And I feel like, you know, that's what the club scene also, it served that purpose. Yes, it's like, it was like a gatekeeper, essentially, for the rest of the anime. Yeah. Um, Good. I I love that scene. Um, The scene with the, like, the club. Just, I love the the art style and everything like that. The art it's, style, like it was so trippy. I bet like, that's not all you big. loved, but oh yeah, totally. <laughs> big that, booties in your face. Loved all the big booties that were like what the greeter who's just in a thong. Yeah, <laughs> and, and here's know, some and drugs. Give her some drugs and here's some yeah, drugs. Out LSD. Force feeds him. Here you go. Hey, you don't know if it was it was it wasn't LSD. It was some other drug that they were talking about. It was like some Debbie drug. Like, well, you put it on your tongue. Yeah, no, it, it's supposed to look like LSD, but you said it wasn't LSD. And you blow the weed smoke into someone. And <laughs> <laughs> you inject the marijuanas. When he, you inject all the marijuana. When he told me about that, I lost my shit because I couldn't believe it. But that's a thing that people do. It is true. Yeah, Kira was get, given the LSD, and then everything started becoming tri- uh, trippy. When I first watched that, I didn't understand why it was trippy. But then, like, it was you pointed out to me, Danny. It's like, oh, yeah, that's obvious. Mm-hmm. I don't know why I didn't spot that. <laughs> so yeah, I guess like in conclusion, sex and like we haven't talked about the violence that much. Oh, the ultra violence. Yeah, the ultra violence. Yeah, it was violent. <laughs> uh, they you don't know, re- the gore. You see, a guy had get cut off, bit off by a, a demon's boob. You know. Oh fuck yeah! The girl's boobs turn into fucking snakes. That was my favorite part. And the fucking <laughs> tremors beast. <laughs> yeah, just like, like yeah, we're just gonna go and make this like. <laughs> Super like all right. We're gonna try and make it. Like, it was like, it was like out of a like a twelve year old's like <laughs> nightmare. Essentially, yeah. just Wet like oh nightmare. my god. Oh her, no. Her titties are going out and biting people. Oh no. <laughs> the way the violence was in the show was that limbs and injuries can just happen within a split second. I like that like, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was like it was a cool like. It, ref- yeah. it reflected the power of like Kira, you know the devils. When he was fighting, when Kiro was fighting Celine, he lost his arm. He just grew back. Yeah, he grew it back, but you know it was just like bam. Oh, he, he doesn't have an arm anymore. Okay, and then the then the other two are like you know wounded. And he's like you know the big bull guy that can shoot lightning. He's like merge with me, and he cuts his head off. And <laughs> He gave his life for her. I, I love that scene just because it's like... Because, like, there, I think that the entire point of that scene was true love versus, like, like sex love. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And yeah. Celine was trying to... Like, right I like that. Too. Like, Celine but. was just trying to have sex with Amon, and it seemed a whole lot less genuine. But then you have, like, her uh, cohort. Well, it was like... And, she, and he had genuine... Like, he was willing to sacrifice parts of his life for her in order right. for her to achieve, like her desires, and then it's like, and then Selena at that moment kind of realizes, like, it's, I think it's it's very subtle, but I think at that moment she realizes his feelings for him. Oh, yeah, right. no, she, she... Well, it kind of also shows the yeah, fact yeah. that, like, even these monsters, these devils... They have, like, that, emotions, like, too. Yeah, that they have, they can develop these kind of emotions, and they can, there's hope for them. And yeah. then Akira's like, wait a minute, like, what I saw, what yeah. they were doing, and then Rio's like, no... You don't know. You don't know. Ne- you don't know anything. Yeah. Who's the expert here? I'm the expert. I am. I'm. I, I'm, I'm a, the expert, man. I. I was I taught by college. Professor Fikura. <laughs> Professor Fikura from Russia. <laughs> <laughs> Were any of you annoyed whenever characters are speaking English and they didn't have subtitles? Because I was annoyed because it was kind of hard to understand them, and I, I go from reading to actually listening. <laughs> No, I was okay with it. No, I, I was fine. They're pretty uh, good at English, so... I guess I just have trouble with accents. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, cool. So anyway, uh... I don't know, I feel like you said all that needs to be said about sex and violence. Action scenes. Well, my, okay, so the action scenes were, like, very, like... Like, someone would get hit, and then they fly across the town to the mountain. Like, people were flying all over the place. Like, it emphasized how powerful these fucking creatures were. It's like watching Superman, you know, yeah. when you're fighting General Zod. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Except, you know, it was every episode. <laughs> so something I did not like, though, is that for a lot of the action scenes, 
I felt it was really hard to tell what was going on at times. Yep. Like things were happening too fast, and they were, and it was a little too dark at some points. You mean like the last episode? Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Which, I, I thought the action scenes were okay. Um, yeah, they were okay. Um, they weren't a- the after, strength of the show. Right. Yeah. After a point, it'd be just be like, you know, it's just you know a bunch of big monsters hitting each other, and you know, bunch ha- bunch of stuff happens. There's like gore, or I guess demon gore. Yeah. Um, they're like, they're like greenish blood. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, so I think the action scenes technically aren't that good, but story-wise, they fulfill their roles pretty well. Yeah. Yeah. Like, my fa- one of my favorite action scenes in the show was when, you know, Celine fused with the, his, her, uh, f- Yeah, no, right. I thought good. that was probably yeah. the best, bat. like, and that was actually a the good action scenes, scene. Yeah. The action scenes aren't taking up, like, an entire episode. It's like... Five minutes at most. Yeah. Most of the time. They didn't do a DBZ thing. <laughs> I'm a charging my spirit bomb. Five episodes yeah. later. It's still charging. Like, we never really get the details on the exact specifics of their strength, but we just know that they're super fucking strong. The, yeah. the uh, devils and devil men. All right. So is there anything else that you want to talk about? Uh, Yeah, action scenes are pretty straightforward. Like, yeah, you know, they serve their purpose, much. but they aren't the best, you know. They are okay. They deserve it. But... Now we're going to talk about the strengths, which is what my favorite thing is. The music. the music. Music. My god, I love the music in this. Have you guys looked up the names of the tracks? And if so, how, do you have any favorite ones? I didn't look up any of the names, but I love the speeder bike, or like when he's on the bike. Um, anything with that, or like when they're in the car. Um, with the whole techno, but... They have this, okay, I think that might be a track called Smells Blood. And that track, if I remember, is like, they have like a little techno beat going yeah. on. Remind- and then they have some chanting that follows up. And it's kind of like a building suspense sort of thing. It song. reminded me so much of, like, the whole, like, post-apocalyptic, like, future. Like a cyberpunk um, type thing? Or? Kind of, yeah. Like, what, what is the movie that just got, like, a sequel Blade um, Runner? Yeah, Blade, it reminded me <laughs> so much of Blade Runner. Right? Yeah, like, it kind of that techno. Stuff. Yeah. Oh my god, I loved it. I love I love those types of techno-like tracks. Mm-hmm. Um, so one of my other favorite tracks is uh, another track called Judgment. And that's the track where it's like... That plays when uh, when Celine transforms... It plays uh, several times throughout the series, but the moment I recognized the song and looked it up was when it happened during the Celine versus Akira mm-hmm. fight. And like... Like, it kind of, like, builds up, and then it drops, and then it's like... Da, 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 da. Mm-hmm. I love that song a lot. Like, I feel like for a, a, a certain period of time, people are going to hear techno tunes and be all... And just think of Devil Man Cry Baby, because that soundtrack oh, is so distinctive. And it, like... It, it's part of, like... Anybody anime. Hmm? Anybody that watches anime. Yeah, yeah. Anyone who's yeah. willing to watch all those episodes. Yep. Um, like, Keyword so, willing. <laughs> You're it's, saying that you were forced to do this, Andrew. Um, I'm saying that this is not, if I had, if I willingly chose to watch this, I would not. No? <laughs> this, no. Okay, so let's, I want to talk about that a bit more, Andrew, the about ending. recommending this. Or do you want to talk about the ending or overall thoughts? Yeah, let's do the ending and then, over, and then yeah. overall thoughts. On. Um, well, let me uh, just have a conclusion here, but the music, like, was a big part of the anime's identity, and, it, and it's really good. Yes. Very good. All right. I liked it, and it is probably the reason why I stuck with it. The ending. All right, the ending. The ending. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man. (laughs) You saw it the most recently, Andrew, so what are your impressions? Oh, well, okay, so um, the ending. uh, You know, Rio is revealed to be Satan, Mm -hmm. which, you know, that was pretty big. Um, I thought he was just gonna be, you know, you know, just a devil, just a right, nope. just a good devil, an angel. good powerful devil. Yeah, yeah. I like the hey, I like the fact that they depict him as like an angel, essentially, because I mean that's what. But yeah. He's a fallen angel. Also, he's a I don't fallen know if, angel. If you guys noticed, but um, you know, was it like Psychic Jenny? <laughs> oh, Psychic, he, oh, yeah, the, that that thing that was his assistant. You know, in the other episodes, oh, that absolutely. woman. Absolutely. Yeah, and, no. <laughs> and oh, like, really? I didn't notice that. Yeah. yeah no. Holy shit. You didn't notice? You did, I did not. 
What? I remember that scene where, like... You, you saw her face when she is a human, right? Me? Her face I, 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 was... I'm not, I'm not, I am oh. not... I shit you not. I did not notice that. <laughs> I'm gonna see if I can pull up a picture. You're gonna pull up a picture? It's literally her face. I know that, but I thought... Legs. But Psychic Jenny seems more masculine than the womanly form it took. What do you mean, womanly form? It was literally just a... F- it was literally just a little head thing. I don't know. I guess I... Like, I remember that scene where, like, Rio's talking with those business fuckers, and, like, they're, like, staring at her, and then Rio just goes, oh, those are real, those, her assets. And then they're all, and then they, like, get flustered, the businessmen. But other than that, I don't really remember her in any other scene. I don't remember that, the fact that she was, sex, sex, like, sexualizing her. Yeah. Or anything like that. With her, with her beautiful clown face. With her beautiful clown face. Yeah, but, but it was... Is that what she looked like back in the old... I, oh my god. Okay, can I see that picture? Oh my also god. Also can you send it to me later so I can put it up for the viewers, maybe. <laughs> oh, oh, jeez. Yeah, what were you going to say about her? You know? But... It's like a Jenny. Oh yeah, you know, and she appears and she, I guess she has tel- telepathic... Yeah, she's psychic. Yeah, she's she psychic. She makes people go crazy. Yeah, but um... Pretty much the last episode is an ex- exclamation of what's happening, and then there's a final fight scene, and it, you know... It's crazy. It's crazy, and I was laughing at parts, <laughs> because, like, okay, like, you know, Rio, Rio and Akira are fighting because, you know, they're co- opposites. One wants to save humanity, the other one wants to kill it now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And, um... You know, they're fighting, and Akira's like, oh, my arm got cut off. And then one of the other devil men's like, use take me! My arm. He take, cuts his head off, and then attaches the Akira and turns it to a really powerful arm. And it's like, ah! Oh. When like, that happened the first time, I thought that someone else cut his head off. Like, it looked, it happened so fast. I know. And then, you know, and then they're fighting some more, and then Akira, both his legs get cut off, and you see two snake people like, use us! And they cut their heads <laughs> off and attach, and, you know, he has legs again. And. I liked it. I liked it. I couldn't take it seriously. I was... It felt like just a compilation of all the craziness the series had. Just oh, like yeah. Shit. And then you, there's a part where, like, it was it Psycho Jenny, you know, is using her weight to have people, you know, kill themselves. And then you see, like, the three humans with umbrella... <laughs> umbrella missile, ga- like, Greek shield spears. Yeah, that was Like... Cool. And, like, they impale her from three sides, but they also impale each other... And they're just like, you can't win. And <laughs> yeah, that was a lot. I'll say that, that was a little weird. It's like, when did they have the time to build this tech? And then, like, you see, like, the devil man being, being experimented on. and The, the one who, the, the lady who's, like, shooting, like, she, white she shoots, fluid. That she shoots, like, <laughs> acid milk out of her tits. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember this. <laughs> I don't remember that. Yeah, it was you all... don't want to remember that. <laughs> um, so, uh, one thing I'll say about the last episode, that scene where she, so she bur- he buries Miki's head, and then, like, you see all the other devil man behind him, and it's like, yeah, let's fucking go. Let's fuck shit up. We've suffered enough. We're here to, we're, let's, we're gonna bring the house down on this fucking horse shit. And then most of the fight scene is just a zoomed out thing of like where the last humans are and there's explosions of lights and and then you know occasionally it goes into Ryo and Akira fighting and then you know it zooms back out and then it just ends with Ryo talking to Akira. Yeah, talking about... Talking to his body. Yeah, talking to his body about how Akira was right the whole time. And then God blows everyone up, and... I like the ending of it. It was depressing. It makes you feel kind of bad. I think it couldn't have gone any other way than that. Like... What do you mean? It could have gone a whole different way. Why? Do you think that humanity could have been saved after that? I mean, a part of... of, Well, not... It would have been... It, it, I was hoping it would be something where they learned, learned to live in harmony because... With the devil? With fucking Satan? Well, I, that was before I knew that Satan was involved. <laughs> I thought, you know, they were just, you know... Oh, yeah, no, absolutely. I thought, I thought they were just, like that. You know, but like as soon as demons, Satan became like, a thing, it's just like, oh, <laughs> oh, no. Okay. I thought, like, okay, so there are two other ways I thought it could have possibly ended. It could have possibly ended with the devil men beating Lucifer in an epic battle and then they're gonna and then the humans and devilmen are be all like we lost so much but 
we 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 did it. Mm-hmm. Or it was going to be like just devil men are left, and then they're going to be all like we're the superior race. We're going to populate the earth now, and we're and then we're going to fight God or something. I I like the way that it ended. I think it that's probably like the correct response from God. Just be like, all right, they kind of fucked up. So by the way, Satan's did you the only one here? Let's just kill him. Did you notice that there's two moons now? Yeah, I saw that. And well, now that, every Earth is a moon. This, I think that's kind of like saying that, like, all right, this is may have happened before. Well, no, no, because, like, in, in uh, Rio's exposition at the beginning of the final episode, he talks about how, like, there was, like, an age of dinosaurs, but just with devils, and then God blew up that Earth. Oh, yeah, that's right. Because, yeah, and so... then that became the first moon. All right. And, like, I think Akira looked up at the moon and talked about how he could see rabbits there, and then... And then, you know, dejectedly, Rio's all like, no, there's nothing there. It's lifeless now. I liked it. I I thought it was great. Because then it's just kind of like, all right, there might be a restart for humanity. Like, the the Earth is still there. Granted, there's nothing there. It's like, molten lava everywhere. It's molten lava. But the fact that, like, it starts over again, I think is a good, like, all right. like I don't know. It feels like... Fresh. Granted, it doesn't deal with the fact that, like, I think it kind of says that, like, humans are shit. It's very cynical. And I feel like you have to really, like, a lot, of, there are a lot of theories that, like, say it's less cynical. Like, the fact that Akira conquers stuff and that there are other devil men means that there's good in humanity. But, but the fact that everything gets destroyed despite all that, like, feels like, like, it feels so, like, it, like, it feels like the show hates humanity. Oh, yeah. I'd say that. The show I, fucking yeah, hates humans. Yeah, I think the creator was, you know, deprived of some stuff, or... Um, <laughs> I just think he's just a cynical dude, that kind of thing. I, he I was an outcast, it. maybe, I don't know. Like, and, okay, mm, so I like the conclusion to Rio's... Or, you know, or, you know, some people just have minds that are like that. Mm-hmm. I mean, look at Quentin Tarantino with some of his stuff, like Django. I mean, that was a good movie. There's a lot that Quentin Tarantino says through the way he depicts violence in his mm. films and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, I like the conclusion to Rio's character arc because through all... The, like, they flash back to that scene where Kira's all like, you're crying too. And they have all the scenes where, like, Rio's growing up and he's, like, so different than everyone else. But, like, Akira's, like, his only friend. Yep. And, like, like, like Rio's whole thing is that he's been putting this end-of-the-world plan into motion subconsciously. And then he becomes aware of it, but not entirely, because at the very last moment, he realizes his feelings for Akira. He realizes why he made him a devil man in the first place. And then, you know, he cries for the first time. He shows some, like, emotion that isn't, like, psycho. Mm-hmm. He shows some real human emotion. Right. I thought when, um, <laughs> at point, I think it was before Ryo knew that he was Satan, um, when they were, like, he, they, like the two were arguing... And he's like, I didn't make you a devil man for, like, this. Yeah. I'd be like, oh, shit, he just told him that he made him, like, he purposely made him a devil man. Yeah. And then, but Akira is just like, you know, that point just went right over his head. Yeah. And I was like, And then he uh, leaves, <laughs> and then he remember he leaves the house and he sees 666 and they're all like, hmm. Right. Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah. <laughs> There's quite a bit of foreshadowing. Well, like, but in the anime itself, like... I th- or like not the anime, the um, manga itself. I think it Rio actually tells him like, "Hey, I'm Satan. I'm making you into a devil." <laughs> well, that also goes like, to the fact that like Rio finds a mask that makes people devil man. It's not the whole like they changed the lore of the oh, original. Really? Yeah, it's oh, a mask okay. in the original one. Alrighty. That's um, why like his like if you look at like this devil man's design, like his face kind of looks like there's a mask on his eyes. I mean, right. That's reminiscent of the old design. Alrighty. So, last bit, overall thoughts. Overall thoughts. Overall thoughts. Eh. Andrew does not like it. Where's your thumb at with this one? Is it here, here, here? Uh, here, here being up, here being sideways, it's, down. It's kind of like... It's, it's like sideways, t- tending more towards down, just because... Like, I get, I get the point it was... Like, you know, trying to show, and it's just, you know, like, I like, I I love some of the characters, but I think 
it could have done better. I don't okay. know. It was just... It, like, maybe, like, was it not, like... I, I guess as a, it, it wasn't for me. Okay. All right. Like, was it not as emotionally, like, I guess, resonant with you? Or, like... Yeah, I guess. Were some scenes, like, you look at those scenes and you think they're supposed to be more impactful, but you're not feeling that that sort of thing, maybe? Right. It, like, sort of like that. Would you say that, like, a lot of the violence and stuff kind of desensitized you over a period of time? Yeah, and that's it was like, just sort of like, I was desensitized, like, yeah, desensitized, whatever, that word. Desensitized. Yeah, <laughs> and it was just sort of like, you know, <laughs> after a point, I was just expecting people to die. It yeah. It was just like, oh, they're gonna so wait, die. did you expect Miki to die? Then? Yes and no. I wasn't, I wasn't expecting her to die like that. With her head on a pike? I thought, like, maybe Rio was going to do it, but, I mean, I guess in a way he did, uh, but it was just sort of like, you know, at least if she was going to die, it would be where Akira was there to see, like, the killing blow instead of just, you know, you know, coming back to see the house on fire and, like, everyone with their heads on. Arguably, he saw something much worse. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> but I... I think it would make more sense if, like, he shows up, he's there, but he... He's too late? He's, like, a few seconds too late. Yeah. That would have made it a little bit better instead of, you know... Just straight up, like, everybody's dead. Like, you came up yeah. way too late. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Because, like, there's a part where she was saying how he's always there for her when... At, like, the last moment. Yeah. Which, that would have... Like, that would have made any sense. Like, he's there, but at that last moment, it's... That moment's a, a moment too late. Yeah, but I think that they needed that just to make <coughs> it so that, like... Because, I mean, uh, like, ultimately, I think that this whole show is about the development of Rio and Akira. Akira. Yeah, yeah. Mostly Rio being the fact that, like, everything is focused around... Everything in this whole story is on him. He sets things in motions and he develops. Yeah, and, yeah. yeah it is about and them too. I think that Miki, while being an important character to Akira, wasn't. And you, she was nothing to Rio. Are you saying that she could have been there in the end? No, like, I don't no think she could have. Okay. I think the fact that, like, because the whole story is making him, making Satan regret his choices. Yeah. And the only thing that would make him regret his choices is if his one and only friend thought that he had to go and fight him. Yeah. Like, come after him. And what is the only way that he was going to do that if, if basically his love interest, Akira's love interest being Miki, dies? Yeah. I I think that she was kind of destined to die for the whole thing. And I don't think that, like, the fact that if he was there right away to be like, I was there, like, just a little bit too late would have been a little bit too cliche. All right. Um, well, the um, fact that they just needed to kill her. Just well, granted, I don't know if they needed to do it in such a violent way, but then again, that is Devil Man Cry Baby. Yeah, being Devil Man Cry Baby. Well, uh, Danny, what were your feelings? I guess. I like where. Where's your thumb at? I like the show. I, I, it's more of like like kind of diagonal upwards. Yeah, I think yeah. it's actually. I think <laughs> for as a show itself, it's pretty good. It's. It could have been better. It definitely could have been better. Um, but there's a lot of aspects that I liked about it, like the music, the, um, a lot of the character development I liked. Um, just the overall story, I kind of liked it. And I love the ending. Um, just because I don't think that it could have ended any other way. Um, and the fact that there's still just a little bit of hope for humanity, well, because Satan is not there anymore. He, I, I believe that he accepted the fact that, like, the fact that he cried is the thing of saying, like, I'm done. Yeah. I, I I'm fucked up. up. I <laughs> fucked up. And he's realized his mistake where he didn't do that with the dinosaurs part. I'm just yeah. gonna say, I almost feel like this needed a second season. I don't. It's, instead of cramming all that happened in one season. <sighs> okay, so here's the thing on that. Um, Devil Man originally had a sequel that took place in the new remade world. No, oh, really? Yeah. Uh, actually, I'm just going to say that now, but I want to talk about my own feelings on the show. Like, I'm I'm in, like, the thumb is, like, here, but going up a little. Oh, like, it's in the middle. One part that I'd like to Okay, one more about. thing. Okay. Um, the reason why I 
like I thought the show was just okay, but the reason why I think it deserves a little bit more praise is the fact that it is of what it is being hyper violent, being pushing the boundaries of what of like mature content, a mature content in anime. Um, in fact, the, the Netflix is a home for it now. Essentially, like these kind of shows where, granted, Devilman might not be the best, it still covers topics of like with Miko. It, where it does new stuff. Where it talks about not very well, um, but it talks about somebody being broken, like Miko was. Something like where these kind of things of like her psyche of being like uh, is sex you're... with people and all that kind of stuff, like, yeah, 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 while being hyper violent like these kind of like talking about hard stuff to talk about that you can't normally talk <coughs> about in anime okay so is it what you're trying to say like like even though not all the arcs were solid in this anime the fact that the anime was willing to go down it to, goes the, down these roads it goes down these popular ro- yeah and it's on a really good home netflix granted it will gain popularity that way yeah yeah netflix is has some issues with it too but <laughs> It's still a great place for stuff to develop on, um, and it creates a tar- like an audience essentially for this yeah. stuff. Like Gigguk, maybe, maybe in the future yeah. we'll get anime that has like Giguk that has more um, like violent stuff. And, yeah. and the YouTuber Giguk does a pretty good explanation of this. I like of the whole like where the point that I'm talking about where Netflix is like a new home for it. It's a very good job of that. I would recommend that one. Okay, that it. video is called. Uh... Why? Why is Devil Man like how? How good is Devil Man Cry Baby? I think in the description. Yeah, yeah. So, all right. Yeah, I can put it in the description if I yeah. want. Um. Okay. So yeah, I felt that the show was like it was just above average. I felt like I or like in terms of quality, I should say. But like the themes and stuff that explored, like they weren't average. They were like I like I really like that the show like just had so much stuff that I just didn't expect to see in an anime. Mm-hmm. I think the fact that, our, that I hope the show influences more, like, bigger studios in the future so that anime changes for the better, hopefully. Yes. Um, and, yeah, and, you know, I felt like, like, there is an issue. Like, Andrew, you talked about how, like, they crammed it all in. I felt like they could have stretched it out a bit more. Like, yeah. make sure certain points are driven home a bit more clearly. You know, have, spend more time getting to know certain characters before you're confused and mix them up with different people. <laughs> Like, I felt like if it was just a bit longer, it'd be much better. And then, like, when the... And then the violence would not happen so often. Like, you wouldn't... You'd be less desensitized to it, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, yeah, I think that's... Like, the, the big issue with the show, I guess I'm saying, is, yeah, it's too short. It should have been a bit longer. Mm-hmm. Um, so, we've all given our overall thoughts. Um, so let me talk about one last thing before we end. Uh, the sequel. The sequel's called Lady Devil Man. Okay. And in that show, like, that opens with, like, a bunch of people are trying to violate a bunch of schoolgirls. And then one of the schoolgirls gets really pissed. She's our main character. Her name is June Fudo. Same last name as Akira. And then she awakens the devil powers within her and she kills all the demons. Okay. That were trying to do the bad things. And there's another person who is also named Rio. Or, like, has Rio's last name. And then she becomes friends with her. Is it Satan? I think so. And, like, and, uh, supposed to be this is one of the earliest, um, there's... I'm with him. (laughs) There's also a Miko-like character in the show that is her rival, but then they fall in love and become a couple. Okay. And she has to protect this human girl that she loves. Alrighty. And I don't, and that's pretty much all I know. And supposedly Akira becomes an ethereal ghost that advises the main character, June Fudo, and makes sure that she doesn't give in to her powers. Okay. And yeah, so do you think would I think wasn't there another thing where like like in the manga or something he goes to hell essentially I don't and know. then they go after oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, you guys know more than me. I just yeah. you just watched the show. I just watched it. Right. So yeah, maybe maybe in the future if the show does good enough we might get a sequel. I Lady Devil Man. I don't know if the show needs a sequel. Yeah. Well, it's I'm just I saying. I think that... it would be better if they went off on their own thing and did something else. Like, just um, didn't adapt Lady Devil Man, but did, like... Yeah. A different type of... Like, would it have any yeah, relation to yeah. Devil Man Cry Baby? Huh? Would it have any relation to Devil Man Cry Baby? Like, would it be a sequel, or just... You think they should just make another anime? I don't know. I'd 
I honestly think it's good the way it is. I okay. Think it did. It's about as good as it's going to get, and I don't think they should go and cash out on it. All right, well... All right, yeah. That's Those are our thoughts on Devilman Crybaby. Um, Hoorah. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs>